For more on Chinese charitable giving, I'm joined by Mark Garais. He lives uh, from, uh, in New York. He's marketing strategist at uh, Mark Garais uh, Consulting, a fashion, hospitality, and lifestyle marketing consultant. He's also an adjunct professor at the uh, Fashion Institute of Technology in Manhattan. Thanks so much for joining us. I mean, great uh, to be here, Nathan. Thanks. Um, you know, this is a middle class problem all over the world, isn't it? You, you have a surplus income, you have surplus clothing, you want to be charitable, uh, but then there's the impact as well. Talk us through it. Yeah, well, China has um, quite a unique situation, um, even more so than the US and Europe, because China happens to be the largest manufacturer of apparel in the world, mm. the largest producer of apparel in the world. So they do have about 26 million tons of apparel waste per year. And the problem is, it's, it's a lot of the people in China do want to give charity and do want to dispose of unwanted clothes properly. But again, it's just more transparency is needed within the middlemen and the charities which are actually doing this work. And I think if there can be some transparency, I do think there's going to be a much brighter future um, actually within the charitable aspect of the recycled clothing uh, business. Yeah, I mean, there's a big surplus here in the U.S., isn't there, too? A lot of it gets shipped off to Africa, sold again, uh, that sort of thing. Is there yeah. a, way, a way that China can learn from sort of the models that we've seen here, for example? Yeah, there is. You know, actually, there are a couple of companies in China right now. One is based in Shanghai called Flying uh, Ant. Uh. And it's a recycling organization which is basically using the American model, which is they collect unwanted garments, they sort them, they store them, they give um, a certain percent, about 10, 15 percent to charity. They export about 20 or 30 percent to Africa, and the rest are recycled uh, within China for other types of fibers into um, different uses, such as uh, padding, insulation, and things like that. So there are a couple of, couple of companies within China which are actually taking the American model. But I think the model is not so sustainable in the future, because you did mention that a lot of American companies are exporting waste fabrics, um, not really waste fabrics, but secondhand clothing to Africa. Many Chinese companies are doing that as well, but starting probably next year, a lot of these East African countries are going to be banning the import of secondhand clothes. So there has to be some other um, opportunities to deal with this uh, problem, which are found domestically, both in the United States and China especially. Yeah, good point, because, of course, when they're exported, they hit local markets as well. Um, here in the U.S., you get a tax break, don't you, if you give sort Correct. of unwanted clothes to a reputable Correct. charity. Could that Correct. kind of work in China? Because that would steer uh, unwanted clothes in the right direction, in a way. Definitely. Uh, I definitely think tax incentives can work, uh, both for consumers and also for the actual uh, producers. For example, if production companies will have incentives, whether they're tax incentives or other incentives, to use post-consumer fabrics in their production process, I think that's going to have a huge benefit in reducing the actual amount of um, wasted fabrics and wasted apparel that are produced every year in the market. So tax incentives and different types of government incentives are important. But there also has to be the ability to create some types of economies of scale as well. There has to be more efficient uh, collection of apparel. There has to be more efficient sor sorting of apparel. Actually, within this particular industry, there is upwards of 200 different grades of fabrics. So even if you have companies which collect these fabrics, mm. the amount of time and resources that are spent just in sorting these fabrics um, is enormous. There's a lot of wasted time. There's also a lot of wasted money in that. So there has to be standards that are created. There have to be incentives by the government. And there has to be education within the Chinese consumers of um, not only maybe consuming less, but also how should they recycle or reuse the actual garments once they're ready to dispose of them. So I think there's a lot of different things that need to be tackled. And we're really on stage one. I think there's just um, a lot of different things that could be done going forward. But just quickly, uh, we're in the stage of fast fashion, aren't we? Uh, uh, where you buy things and wear them once or twice uh, uh, and sort of move on. Um, uh, that's sort of counter to what you're saying, really. Yeah, fast fashion is one of the big parts of the problem. And I don't think there's any turning back. The funny thing is, when we look at, a, at textiles itself, if you look at woven fabrics such as cotton and wool, it takes over 100 years for them to somewhat even biodegrade mm. within, the, within the environment. But now you have companies, fast fashion companies, actually producing apparel at very low cost. We're um, using them and turning them around. And 90% of all the apparel ends up in landfills. 
And within China itself, the problem is there's also a lot of illegal dumping of fabrics in landfills. There are people which are starting to, which are growing crops on top of illegal landfills, which have textiles on it. So it's really causing a massive, massive problem. And fast fashion, fabric is meant to last, mm. but fast fashion is not meant to last. It's meant to be disposed almost as fast as you're purchasing it. So it really is a double-edged sword that we're dealing with right now. Mark, that was a fascinating discussion. Thanks so much. Uh, lots to Thank think you about. So much. I really appreciate Thanks so much, it. Nathan.